Well, Denise, thank you so much for being here with me on the Entrepreneurial Success Podcast. I mean, oh my goodness, guys, we've got an amazing episode lined up here for you today. When Denise and I first met and she told me what she was doing, I was like, what? I didn't even know that existed. So Denise, hello, introduce hello. yourself to the audience and tell us who you are. So Henria, I am the Move Well coach and thank you so much for having me here today. Um, my work is all around helping you feel better in your body and as a cascade effect of feeling better in your body and moving better in your body, you actually feel better in your mind and in your heart because everything is connected. And I do that work through a variety of tools, most importantly, um, and the starting point is always clinical somatic movement, which not many people have heard of. I know. And that's where you got me when you said yeah, clinical right, somatic I movement. I was like, what? What is this thing that you're talking about? It's just honestly, I've never heard of it. But then as soon as you start explaining it to me, it's just like, oh my goodness, this is incredible, which is why we've got you on the podcast today. However, before we dive into all of that good stuff, tell us a little bit about you. How did you become a movement coach? What kind of led to that? And how did that end up to where you are now? Well, it's a really long story. And I don't know, I know we don't have a lot of time today, but um I came from technology. I had a massive job. I was one of those typical type A personalities with rocks as shoulders, stiff hamstrings, sore back, suitcases, two passports, traveling everywhere, managing the world. And I felt like um, I, I felt horrible in my being and in my mind. And uh, my, little, my daughter came along as a gift from the universe. And so I was a single mother. And one day I just knew this work that I was doing is not my calling, is not what I'm meant to do. So I left, I became a yoga teacher and found my passion in sharing the practice of yoga. And through my daughter's health journey, um, she has an autoimmune condition discovered other well-being tools, including essential oils, including pause practices, including a different way of living and being. And then one day I stumbled across somatic movement and I thought this is just going to be another one of those tools that would be transformational for my clients. And oh, by the way, it's been transformational for me. I'm in my early fifties and it has changed everything for me. And so now I integrate all of that into the work that I do today. That's incredible. So let's put everybody out of their misery. Can you just explain to us a little bit about what somatic movement is? Sure. So clinical somatic movement is a way of moving in the body that helps you to change the brain and the messages from the brain through the nervous system into the body. Uh, it's not exercise. A lot of people say to me, oh, so it's like yoga or Pilates. It's not. It's about sensing and feeling into the body and becoming aware of the stress patterns that exist in your body that you don't even know you hold and dissolving them away quickly and easily, quite literally dissolving them away. I know. And I, you did a little bit of a test on me the first time you and I met, and I can honestly say it worked. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that just astound me. So let's talk about stress today, because yes. I think that is something we all have. We can't escape it. It's something we all have. So yeah, stress, we are just as a blanket statement. I think we as a general population in the world today, are uber stressed and we probably don't even realize that we are. It comes from the situation that of everything that has happened over the last three, four years. Stress in itself is not bad. Sustained stress, stress is really bad. Yeah. Um, mentalhealth.org did a test and they said this year, 2022, 74% of UK adults have felt so stressed at some point that they have been unable to cope or have been overwhelmed. And 87% of that number are women. Mm. So uh, we also know from the medical, a lot of the studies that are happening now is that all chronic disease, no matter what kind of chronic disease that we're talking about comes from stress and how stress 
habituates itself in our bodies, in our minds, and into, into yeah. disease. So what we experience as, as human beings, everything is a bodily experience. And that's why starting with the body as a catalyst to get into the mind, to get into the emotions is exceedingly powerful. Yeah. If you know how to do it, right. Of course. Yes. Now, one of the things you mentioned as well is because of the disease that is being created through stress is a sensory motor amnesia. What is this? I mean, it sounds very (laughs) like I'm a doctor or a nurse or something here, but what is that exactly? So sensory motor amnesia is not a disease per se. It's actually, well, let's back up. So we all have sensory motor systems, and that is your brain, your nervous system, which is how your brain talks to your body and how your body talks to your brain and the body. It's how we take in information from our world. We sense and feel, we see, we, we notice, and then how we respond through our brains to move our body. Our sensory motor system is super smart and it responds to the daily stresses we might be in with by creating muscular patterns or body shapes. Mm. Um, Half the time we're not even aware that our bodies are taking these shapes or these patterns. And these patterns or shapes are also known as something called reflexes. It's an automatic. We are, as human beings, habit-making machines. So if we do something often enough, if we repeat something often enough, like sitting at a desk and typing on the keyboard, speaking on Zoom, (laughs) our brain and our body will habituate the shapes in that we are making to sit at the desk and type on the keyboard. What happens then is that those shapes, those muscle muscles, muscles, (laughs) those muscles that have tightened, for example, our shoulders for like this, and our brain says, okay, well, this is a habit. So I'm going to move the control of these muscles, our shoulders, out of the conscious part of the brain into the subconscious, the unconscious and the involuntarily, involuntary part of the body, so that we as human beings can no longer contract and relax, most importantly, mm-hmm. relax these muscles because we have the habit of being here. And the result of that habituation of that particular kind of stress is stiffness, pain, restricted movement, and a whole host of other things. And that a kind of restriction, that habituated stress is sensory motor amnesia. Quite literally, we forget how to move certain parts of our body. And we think we can, we actually, with SMA, perceive our bodies incorrectly. We might think we're standing straight, but actually we might be standing crooked. And our brain sees that as straight. And that affects our standing, that affects our walking, our moving, our mental stress patterns, our emotional stress patterns, and a whole host of other things. Yeah. It's so interesting because one of my clients is a physiotherapist and she said exactly the same thing. She said, just look at a person standing. And if you really tune into it, you will see that they are not standing 100% straight. They think they are, but they're not. There's always kind of like the hips are turned one way and the shoulders are turned another way. And it's just completely crooked. And what's happening then is the body is trying to kind of say, okay, well, this is now a habit. This is how you're standing, creating pain in the neck, creating pain in the knee. And people are going, oh, I've got a knee problem. It's not the knee that's the problem. It's somewhere in your body, something else is not right. Mm -hmm. And that was just a huge mind blowing thought to me because we think where the pain is, that's where the issue is, but it's not in most cases. Yeah. The issue is never where the pain is. It's always somewhere else because the somewhere else is causing a cascade effect. And sensory motor amnesia is the something else in that part of the body that has become locked or stiff or immobile that is then affecting the rest of the body. So if you think of, (coughs) excuse me, if you think of your body as um, cogs, different parts of your body as cogs in a watch and one of the wheels, one of the watch wheels turns, that turns the other cog. But if that one is stuck, suddenly this one can't turn as it's meant to. And that's where we get pain, stiffness. Yes in the body now oh my gosh what's 
interesting is that we used to assume that this stiffness and this tension is something that's normal with aging. Mm. We're getting old. Oh, it's normal. How many, how many times have you thought that or heard people say, oh, I'm just, I'm in my forties or I'm in my fifties or I'm in my six. It's just normal. And it used to be that from the thirties, forties, fifties, that's when, you know, we'd feel a little, hmm. but the absolute scary thing is that given the stress that we have been under back to stress over the last three years, and given also our propensity to be on screens, the body patterns that we used to associate with 80 year olds, 70 and 80 year olds, the elderly body pattern, we are now seeing in our youth. And our 20 year olds in, of this generation, the, the kids who of today, as they become 20, are going to have the same issues that we used to associate with being elderly and aged. Oh my goodness, and, that's scary. Yeah, and it's down to how we're living and all of that can be changed. Yeah, that is so scary. So mm. there's something you mentioned, the dark vice and the myth of aging. Yes. What is that exactly? <laughs> Okay, so that actually gets into as sensory motor amnesia patterns and how they sit in the body. So yeah. um, there are, the good news is there are only three main patterns that sit in the body, stress patterns. Um, two of them show up based on how we're living. Mm -hmm. And the two of them combined together create something called the dark vice. So let's talk about what those are. So first of all, um, the first tension pattern is called the withdrawal uh, pattern, or mm -hmm. in somatic circles, we call that the red light reflex. Think of death sitting, think of the fetal position. Um, this is the stress response that's like distress or protection of the body. You're trying to save yourself. You're trying to evade something for survival. And we have this response triggered in our physical beings by anything from like vague worries to fears of failure to anxiety to physical danger somebody throws something at you the first thing you do is this anxiety unfortunately is our currency in this day and age so just for a moment stop and think Henriette how much how many times a day do worries or anxieties or stress pass through your brain and every time that does that's triggering yeah this stress response in you forget about sitting at a desk it's just what you're thinking up here yeah but unfortunately this tension can build up in the body and create a residual tension that sits and that gets stuck and that stays yeah. even when the situation is resolved and we don't realize that so it becomes chronic it affects our heart rate, affects our breathing. Um, here's one for you. There was a study done at the Minneapolis St. Paul Hospital a few years back. And they looked at the breathing of 153 heart attack patients. Every single one of those patients was a thoracic, as in they were all breathing up here. Mm. None of them was breathing down here. And that's because the when we have this red light withdrawal reflex, we are so stressed and stuck here. We no longer breathe properly. Mm. The diaphragm gets stuck. The rib cage gets stuck. And all of that tension builds up. So things like heart disease, blood pressure, breathing issues, respiratory problems, digestive issues, impotence, neck and shoulder pain, knee and hip pain, TMJ, tinnitus, all of that comes from this. And we just think, oh, well, I just have some shoulder pain or I just have high mm. blood pressure, but actually there's a deeper trauma sitting there. That's really interesting. So that's, I, I love your examples of it. It just right. makes so much sense. <laughs> so that's just the one stress pattern. What about the other stress pattern? So the other one is the, and, and, and I'm going to invite you, Henriette, to put this into your context as a woman running her own business mm -hmm. is the, get it done, assertive action response. And in somatic circles, we call this the green light response. Mm -hmm. It's the, I'm going to go tackle that to-do list. It's, it's to-do list. It's alarm clocks and calendars and coffee and quotas and deadlines. And it's stress engendered. So yeah. what does this kind of action re uh, uh, reflex or action response look like? Well, it's like 
you know, if you think of so a general marching off to war, war, it's the chest pulled up, it's the shoulders pulled back, it's the back muscles super tight. Well, in our society today, how many of us have the habit of tight back muscles? Mm -hmm. How many of us have the endemic low back, low grade back pain present? And oh, yeah. when, I can put my hand up for that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And when you have that present, things like fatigue, sciatica, lower back pain, headaches, neck and shoulder pain, herniated discs, jaw pain, and so much more. All of that comes from that. So how does this play into what I, what we mentioned, what you asked me about, the dark vice? So if you think about the fetal position, the front body's tight. If you think about the action position, the back body's tight. Well, if you have something where the front body and the back body are tight, well, guess what? You no longer can move. You can't move the front body, you can't move the back body, and you become stuck in this vice. And we in our society believe, oh, well, I'm just getting old. I'm just getting, um, yeah, that's just the way it is that I'm a little stiff and it's just part of aging. But that decrepitude is absolutely preventable and reversible, which is yeah. the great news. And it is possible to successfully age and avoid the loss of, of your bodily function. So the things like stiff and limited movement, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, shallow breathing, negative self-image, chronic high blood pressure, all of that is a result of the dark vice present in our bodies. Oh my so, gosh. And as you're sharing that, I don't want everybody to go like, oh my God, I'm so depressed right now. <laughs> that is not the case. I think it's really interesting with what you're sharing here because it makes us actually tune in to Ooh. our bodies. And as you were talking about, I was doing the exact same thing. It's like, where's my stiff shoulder coming up and where's my lower back pain? And, and then I'm thinking, okay, but that's just my body telling me that something somewhere is wrong. So what is it that I'm doing wrong? What is that habit that I've created in order to put me into this position? Mm. And I think this is now where you come with like, aha, there is a solution. Is and this solution. is with what we shared earlier on, the somatic movement. So, you know, how would somatic movement then kind of solve these issues, if I may ask? Well, so a clinical somatic or somatic movement is, as we said, works with the brain to change the messages from the brain. I like to think about it as um, relaying the telephone lines. <laughs> okay. Brilliant analogy. Those <laughs> my age, I'm old school, but uh, relaying the telephone lines. So if we have, for those of you who are watching this on video, if we have some stress stuck in these shoulder muscles because we're forever sitting like this, <clears throat> the brain has said, okay, this shoulder is always tight. We're going to keep it tight. And it's taken the control of these muscles out of the consciousness. So you no longer can voluntarily relax through somatic movement. And as you experienced, sometimes just five, 10 minutes or 15 minutes of somatic movement can relay that connection between the brain and these muscles. So you remember, re-remember how to contract and relax these muscles and start to dissolve that tension because we've reconnected the conscious brain to yeah. this part of the body. So of the two patterns that we talked about, the, the kind of fetal position, reaction, withdrawal, and the action one, those are because of how we live. And mm -hmm. all of us today are living in this action and withdrawal stress environment. And all of us ha ha have stress, stuck in the body it's kind of like you eat food you've eaten your breakfast you've got plaque that's built up on your teeth so you brush your teeth to get rid of the plaque and you do the same thing again after dinner maybe after lunch if you're really good at your teeth <laughs> dental hygiene well we live our days and we sit in these stress responses just because of how we exist in this yeah. urban technological society it's just how we live today but are you brushing your body to get rid of the stress patterns? And most mm. of us don't. There's a third pattern. <laughs> and this pattern comes if you've had an accident or an injury. So let's say you've broken a leg. What are you gonna do? You're gonna limp and put the bulk of your body weight on the other leg mm. until you heal. But unfortunately that healing time takes some time. So the brain is gonna habituate that 
your weight needs to go onto the other leg. So you have this crookedness, this twist, this more weight on one leg. And so somatics can not only be used to dissolve as a daily kind of, I'm gonna brush my teeth to get rid of the stress in your body. You can use it to dissolve the patterns that have come as a result of accidents and we all have them carry a handbag on one shoulder or we sit twisted at the desk mm. we can use that to dissolve those but if the trigger or the cause of that pattern in the body is no more you've healed both legs are working perfectly once you use somatics to dissolve that it goes away and doesn't come back so somatic movement can happen in two ways yeah. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. So you said the other thing is the power of using the body as a catalyst. Yeah. What do you mean by that? So we experience stress, whether it be physical, mental, or emotional. And we can use somatics, somatic movement with its somatic principles to move in a certain way by going into contraction and longing elongating out of that contraction by sensing and feeling into the physical body. This physical body is very present. It's very concrete. We can look at it. We can see it. We can feel it. We can touch it. Many of us here, Ooh, let's go do some meditation. Let's go do some breath work. Let's go get still. And many of us struggle with that. Have you, Henriette? I've been meditating to... for quite a while, but I will say in the beginning, it was one of the hardest things to train myself to do. And, and is it always simple and easy? And I, I don't like to use the word successful, but do you always achieve that place of stillness when you sit to meditate? Not always. It depends on the day. Sometimes it's harder than other days, but yeah. um, I think, you know, with anything, the more you try it, the better it gets, but yeah. it's never 100%. That's yeah. the thing. And it never will be. Yes. So absolutely positively. I mean, and you are one of the rare few who stuck with it and gone, okay, I'm going to persist through the uncomfortableness and I'm until the enough time goes by that you're able to have a meditation practice. I'll share my story. Back when I was that stressed out executive traveling the world in my brain, I remember trying meditation. No way, Jose, would that work for me? It just didn't. It was completely 100% inaccessible to me. What was, a, <clears throat> what was accessible to me was my yoga practice. I'm a Ashtanga yoga practitioner. I was connecting my breath with my body movement and gradually, slowly, over many years of practice, I now, we're talking 15, 15 plus years of practice, daily practice, I'm now able to sit to meditate, but it is not, some days are harder than others, as you have said. The most incredible thing about somatic movement is that because we're using the physical body and we're sensing and feeling into something that we move and do, that's very concrete. We're not trying to access the brain. Mm. But as a side effect, we are accessing the brain. And every single one of my clients, five, 10 minutes in, they all go, oh, can I have, oh, I feel so relaxed. Oh, can I have a nap now? I think you felt it yourself. We just did 10 minutes together and you said, oh, yeah, I feel like I can breathe. I feel more relaxed. Yeah. And that is the result of, or the power of using the physical body in such a way to access the brain. I will often say to, to my clients, use your somatic movement before bed. You move 10 minutes, you reset that nervous system. So we've gone from fight or flight into rest and restore. Yeah. Now you could sit to meditate or now you could get into bed and you have a greater chance of falling asleep more quickly and staying asleep for longer because you're not in that stressed out fight or flight. Yes. You're in that rest and restore place. And majority of the population is in fight or flight mm. all the time that's sustained stress and that's what causes disease it's so interesting now that you're sharing that because i remember when i was um, very young in school and going through exam you know periods and things like that my mom would always say when you go to sleep at night just 
Talk yourself through by starting relaxing your toes, feet, legs, stomach, all the way up to your head and mm. just literally feel it relaxing as you're going. And then you're going to find that you're going to fall asleep a lot easier, a lot quicker. And you're going to have a good night's yep. sleep before going for your exam. And I was like, oh, OK, I can do that. And the first time I did, it, I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. Loved it. And I've been doing it ever since then. But what I didn't realize is in a nutshell, what I was trying to do myself anyway was consciously making myself aware that I needed to relax my muscles. Mm -hmm. I should be like this going to bed. Yeah. I still do it today. <laughs> I meditate myself to sleep. Brilliant. And that's an amazing way of getting your body ready for sleep. Yeah. An amazing way of relaxing. But remember, if you've got sensory motor amnesia in your body, which mm. we all do, you're not going to be able to relax that muscle because you no longer have conscious control. Yeah. You're able to relax the bits of your body that you're still connected control to. Of. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not able to relax, which means you don't always have full range of movement in your body. So for anybody who's an athlete or for anybody who wants to continue to go and do and be and explore the world, having that functionality in the body as we get older is super key and critical yeah. and essential yeah. to, to aging well, which is yeah. why... I I like to say how you move in your body is how you move through your life. And when you change your body, you change your life. Mm. I mean, here's one. How many times have you had a headache or a stomach ache or a neck ache or a shoulder ache? How effective were you in your business on that day? Not very effective because all you can think about is the pain. <laughs> when we're in pain, our bodies shout the loudest. Yeah. And as much as we try to prioritize something else, our bodies always, always come out first. So by saying, okay, I'm going to listen to my body. I'm going to change my body. I'm going to support my body. I'm going to allow my body to speak to me. You change your everything, your whole yeah. way of being in regards to your life, in regards to your business, in regards to your relationships with, with others. All of that comes together. Yeah. Oh, it's so beautifully put together. And, and I love the way you're talking about it because, again, like I said, that first time you and I had a conversation, it's just a different concept and it's something that I haven't heard of before. Mm. And yet I think, you know, some of the movements and the things you showed me, it's like, yeah, but we wouldn't think to move that way. You know, when because what you basically did is just help me with my shoulder because I get a lot of stiffness in my shoulder. It's exactly that example. Like, uh, <laughs> that's how I felt. And then you just showed me how to do a simple couple of movements. And I've been doing it ever since. And I was like, this is incredible. Right? But the thing is, is we don't know what movements would work for us. We don't know what is those movements that actually we need to make sure that we can do to connect that wire from the brain to that muscle. And that was just astounding. So I absolutely loved the way you shared that. Now, I absolutely just love having this conversation with you, but I know the audience and everybody watching this video is going, oh my gosh, what is this movement? What are you talking about? I need to know. I need to know. Yeah. So you kindly offered for the audience here, everybody who's interested in order to learn a little bit more about it and see how it can help them. You've offered a 20 minute free session with anybody who can book this with you before February, the end of February. Um, and this is basically just them asking, how can you help me? How would this work? And you just kind of giving maybe them a couple of tips or whatever that might look like. So um, basically in a nutshell, you're just offering everybody here a taster of what it would be like, like you did for me, which was incredible. And it is something I'm still using today. Right. So yeah, thank you so much for making that available. So for the audience, if you guys are listening to this and if you've been watching this video and you felt just as inspired as I am, and you've been tuning into your body a little bit as you've been listening to this and going, oh my gosh, I am sitting at my desk. Do you feel a little bit of back pain? It's like, oh yeah, you know, this morning I did wake up a little bit with neck pain, slept wrong, which is what we all say, right? Yeah. Um, I would suggest just go and book a session with Denise and just go and sort it out. And I promise you the tools that she's going to give you, you'll be so surprised at how easy it is. But at the same time, you're going to feel amazing. Just like she said, you know, um, once you change your body, you change your life because mm. that pain isn't there anymore. Mm. And I think for so many of us with the stress, with everything that's been happening in the world, we need this more than ever. Yes. So Indeed. Denise, 
Thank you so much for being here on the podcast. Is there any last tips or anything that you would like to share with the audience as a last thought? I would just say, be gentle with yourselves. (laughs) (laughs) I know because we're our own worst enemies. We just do not concentrate on be giving ourselves a little bit of extra care and love. Yeah. Yeah. So just be, be gentle with your bodies, be gentle with yourself. And, and that kindness goes a long way. Uh, Amazing. Thank you so much. And for those of you who would like to connect with Denise, all her social media links will be in the show notes below, including her website and more importantly, that link to go and have a chat with her. So by all means, go down to the show notes and get stuck in. And I'm sure you're going to love having a chat with Denise. Denise, thank you so much again. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for the value you're offering. And thank you so much for the tips. I mean, gosh, you helped me. If you can help me, you can help anyone. (laughs) Fantastic. So glad it's helped. Brilliant. Amazing. Thank you so much. We'll speak soon again.